Hey, I don't even know what you'd call this, but it does this. Hmm, radio. So it repeats the signal continuously. Um, yeah. What else can we do with this thing? Maybe we could do this. That doesn't make any difference. So, this is pretty much useless. All it does is repeat a signal. Anyways, now let's look at this thing up here. It's a RAM. It's a 10-bit, 10-slot uh, RAM, I guess you can call it. So, it's got 10 slots to save on, and it's a 10-bit RAM. So, it's capable of, of producing an answer of up to a hunt or up to 1023 I'm pretty sure anyway so this is pretty much one of the most compact rams out there it's not the most compact I've seen more compact um, which when I saw, I thought, well, how the hell did this guy even think of that? And I've just found a problem. Wow. I can't believe I just found that. So I'm going to have to add repeaters along all of those now. But I'll do that later. Anyways, the way it works is basically you have the inputs, you have the use usage command and the save command and the read command um, so basically when when you want to use the slot okay basically if you want to use the slot that's the slot enabler and disabler so that's disabled because the torches are on uh, what's going on here Okay, and then enabled because the torches are off. Okay, so basically now, what we'll do is we'll disable again. We can give an input of, for example, this here. So we have two, we have one and one here for an input. Okay, but all of these slots are turned off, so not one of these slots can save. By the way, there's 10 slots here. So it's a 10 bit RAM by 10 slots. I'm not sure if I already said that. Uh, anyway, so now if we enable that slot, well, let's try and save first. Uh, and if, if it saves, these torches here will turn on basically. These torches here would turn on. But because this slot isn't enabled, we can try to save all we like and get no response so as soon as we enable it we can save okay and in in an instance of saving it it wouldn't be a lever it would be a button you know but we need the lever to hold it like that okay so that's saved there now now I can remove this and for example turn on another uh, turn on another input and look it stays the same the input hasn't or the output from the from the memory hasn't changed see okay now if I go and save it again it does okay now I can turn that output off and our, our, our output from the memory remains the same okay and here's our read command so basically if you want to read 
from this slot this redstone torch track would be disabled so by default it would be inverted so that there's always an output here and only when you want to read from this slot you would send a signal and here we go it allows these torches to be uh, depowered because the way I've built it so if there's always a signal there it holds these torches off alright and if there isn't a signal there torches that still haven't got power or the torches that no longer have power here will be turned on which is because this torch here turns this line on which then turns that torch off which then allows this torch to be powered which gives us a powered output uh, and yeah it, it works it's a working setup so like we've got slot 1 enabled let's enable slot 2 and uh, let's save something to it for example we'll just save this one to it let's turn this one off okay so we save okay so now we've got that signal saved we can also now turn this output off because that output's not going to be there forever so it's basically the whole idea of a RAM so we've still got the output there and if we read from this RAM we've got that output there alright and basically to to either clear the RAM uh, to either clear the RAM or just disable the RAM so you no longer want to use this RAM slot it's just turn, turning it off okay um, so yeah, either to clear the RAM is basically just a turn it off command or disable command and yeah same if you don't want to use it it's just a disable command so that you're no longer using it um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the, the how compact this is this is quite a compact design I'm I'm pretty amazed at how compact I managed to get it but yet you know like I said there's other other designs out there which are more compact than this one okay so what we'll do is we'll count one of the memory slots for example this is the start of a memory slot here oh, if we include the input what we'll do is we'll, we'll include the input and then the memory slot so this is all the inputs here along this line this is start of the memory slot I'm going to say 1 2 3 4 5 ok yeah 5 so that's yeah so 1 2 3 4 and 5 so this is 5 slots wide we should just count from here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and then that's the start of the next one so that's five, 5 blocks wide how tall is it? Uh, including all the redstone sitting on top of here because it's not like you can place a block there can you? so including this redstone 1, 2, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So nine blocks, nine blocks tall, and it's two blocks wide. Each each unit is two blocks wide, five blocks long, and nine blocks tall. Um, but yeah, obviously, if you're stacking them up big time like this you know it's going to, it's going to be longer obviously you know it's impossible for it not to be okay guys so that's a wrap for this video um that's basically just a quick short tutorial showing you guys uh the compact ram how it works and that it works correctly if you want a tutorial on how to build it um just post a comment all right guys i'll catch you later